The song says, amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That God would save somebody like you and me, though we don't deserve it. And he offers us salvation and he offers us forgiveness all for free by grace. We don't understand that. We are used to pay for it. If I don't pay, I don't get. And we don't understand the meaning of getting it as a gift. A gift is free. If you pay for it, it's no longer a gift. God offers forgiveness. Basically, you sin, you go to God, you ask for forgiveness, he forgives you. And then you sin again and you don't feel good about going back. But if you go back with honest, broken heart, he forgives you again. The Bible says simply, if you confess, God is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse. That means that in the moment you confess, in that moment he forgives. And we don't understand really how does it work. But you don't need to understand in order to believe. You can never understand God. Your brain is too small compared to God's brain to understand how God works. But you do need to trust that he keeps his word. And you don't feel forgiveness. It's not like electricity. It is by faith. You take God's word for it. If God promised, you need to believe it. How does forgiveness work? Well, I'm going to use an illustration, an example. We used to, before being a pastor, we had a business and we used to have a big garden, very nice garden. And in that garden, we had many things, among which we had a lot of strawberries. I mean, a lot of strawberries. We would go twice a week or more and pick up many, many, many containers, many buckets of strawberries. In that time, during communism, there was a habit. They would cut our electricity two, three, four hours a day, and they would cut our water two, three, four hours a day. And when the electricity was not working, and when the water was not running, then we taught our kids, if they go to the bathroom, we left a container, a bucket with water, and we told them, you flush the water. And if it doesn't go, you take the toilet brush and you clean it, you don't leave it dirty. And then you put water from the bucket and flush it properly. Well, that day, we also had evangelism. Though I was not a pastor, I was involved in evangelism, Bible studies. And so we went to the garden, we picked up strawberries, a lot of them, the kids ate a lot of strawberries. We came home with many, many, many containers, big containers, nice, a lot of strawberries. And we had to take a shower, uh, run to the church to make sure that we get there in time for evangelism. Our kids were dirty, so dirty, and we had no time to wash them, to change them. So we talked to the neighbor. Would you please watch our kids? We'll be back in about two hours. Would you watch them? The neighbor said, absolutely, I will go there and just uh, read or do something, watch TV, and keep an eye on your kids. Well, well, well. The neighbor got some visitors, and she forgot about, about our kids. Our kids knew that we share everything we get with people, with friends, with neighbors. Every time we get something, we give it to people. So our kids came, all the other kids from the neighborhood, to share the strawberries. But the water was off. And so they ate strawberries, and then they ate pears, and then they ate corn, and then they ate honey, and then they ate strawberries, and then they ate honey, and then strawberries, and then drink water, and then strawberries. Can you imagine what happened to their little stomach? They got stomach problems, so they all went to the bathroom, but the water was not running. The week before, my wife and I painted the house. And my wife worked really hard to paint for a whole week and then to clean the windows and everything. Our kids would come, Mommy, can we help you? My wife said, No, 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 no. I don't want you to get dirty with paint. Just, just, just go and play with your toys. Well, after they ate strawberries, after they went to the bathroom and the water didn't run so they could not flush the water, Ovi, our youngest son, that was only three years old, said to Gabriel, our older son, that was six years old, you know, we got to paint the house. This color is better than my mom's color. He looked in the bathroom. He looked in the toilet. I said, this color is better. He was looking in the toilet, 
in the, uh, you know, you understand what I mean. So he took the toilet brush. Put the toilet brush in the toilet. Can you understand that? And then he started to paint the walls from the toilet. And he says to his brother, it's a little too brown. And his brother says, well, what if you put in the toilet and then you put the brush in the strawberries? Then it's not so brown, it's more reddish. So they put the toilet brush in the toilet, in the strawberries, on the walls. Toilet, strawberries, walls, toilet, strawberries, until they finished everything in the toilet and destroyed all the strawberries. When we came home, the kids from the neighborhood, Mr. Goya, you don't want to go home? Why not? I want to go home. No, please don't go. You'll be scared. I said, why would I be scared? When we opened the door, it was terrible. And the smell was horrible. We could not even breathe. They painted from the toilet the entrance hall halfway. And Odi had the toilet brush in his hand. And he smiled, Mommy, can you continue? I'm not tall enough. I could not reach higher. Can you continue from here to the ceiling? My wife lost it. She started to cry. And then she wanted to spank them. I said, don't you punish them. They destroy the house. The way they painted the house from the toilet, it went into the walls. We had to pay a team and move away from the house for a whole week. And the team had to scratch all the mud, all the mortar up to the brick because the smell was inside the mortar. And they had to apply new mortar and then paint. It was a lot of work, a lot of money. And the smell, we had to keep a whole week all the windows open for the smell to get out of the house. It ruined everything. My wife was so angry, so frustrated. I said to her, you know, when I was young, I did so much stupid stuff and my father forgave me. We need to forgive them. But, but, but they did wrong. I said, well, we do so much wrong and God forgives us. Shouldn't we forgive them? We did a lot more wrong and God forgave us and his son, Jesus, paid on the cross. What the kids did compared to what we do, it's a lot less. If God forgives you or me, shouldn't we forgive them too? Because the way we forgive them, it teaches them how God forgives. The way you forgive them, <clears throat> it shows others that we believe that God has forgiven us. So instead of spanking them, we just forgave them. Sure, we had to fix the damage. We had to fix the, the, the walls. But the Bible is very clear. To the degree that you forgive others, to that degree God forgives you. And if you don't forgive others, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. And if you judge others, to the measure you judge, to the same measure, God will judge you. But if you are gracious to others, God will be gracious to you. You cannot go to God and say, forgive me, if you don't forgive the others. As God forgives you and you have a lot of debt, your sins have crucified Jesus. As God forgives you, you need to forgive those around you. And by the way, it's very important. When we don't forgive others, that means that we don't understand forgiveness. You cannot give what you don't have. You need to receive forgiveness in order to have what to give from. You need to receive grace in order to be able to share grace. You need to receive love in order to give love. People that don't forgive others are the people that have a theory of religion, a lot of forms, but they have never experienced forgiveness and grace. But those people that have experienced God's amazing grace, they cannot help but extend grace and forgive others. People that don't forgive are the people that basically they are not forgiven. Not only that they are not forgiven, they have no peace, no joy, no love in their life. They are those that are judgmental Christians. They are those that make church unpleasant and misrepresent God's love and grace and character. They make God and the church not attractive, but rather something that is not pleasant. When you are filled with God's forgiveness, when you understand what he has done for you, the magnitude of Jesus' sacrifice, the magnitude of his forgiveness, when you understand that not only that he has forgiven you by all your sins, but he gives you heaven, 
eternal life. And you know that you'll never be able to pay for his blood or for, e for eternity. The more you understand that grace and love, the more you would forgive others and give them grace and love and compassion. And to the degree that you forgive others shows the degree that you understand God's forgiveness to you. 